Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about prime numbers, Arabic milli algorithms, and chemical numbers. And you can be surprised that in the subtitle of this video you see chemical numbers. And then you ask yourself what is the link between the prime numbers and Rabin Miller algorithms? But we will discover this if you stay with me. There is a very strong relationship between prime numbers and Rabin Miller algorithms and chemical numbers. So stay with me and then we will discover the link between them. The content of this video. Today we are going to talk about the definition and some examples of prime numbers, the properties, how to recognize a prime number by the Rabin Miller algorithm so to check if a number has a prime or not. We are going to talk also about the reliability of the algorithms and then we can help studying one of application of prime numbers. Okay, uh, let's start by the definition of prime numbers. A prime number is a positive number different from 0 and different from 1, so that the only divisor of that number have 1 and itself. And then in this slide, you have the definition of what means by A device B, factor and divisor. Some examples of prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and so on and so forth. When a number is not prime, you will be said to be composite. The first property of this slide, every integer hand greater than 1 can be written as a product of primes. As you can see, for example, 18, 18 is equal to 2 times 3 times 3. And you can also see uh, 561 is equal to 3 times 11 times 17. And then you can see this conjecture of a callback. It is just said that if I take even an uh, integer, you can have uh, 14, 14 equal to 11 plus 3. So any and every even integer greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of two primes. After the Goldbach's conjecture that uh, every even number greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of two primes, for example, if you take 14, 14 equal to 11 plus 3, 4 equal to 2 plus 2, 8 equal to 3 plus 5. We are going now to prove that the set of all primes is uh, not finite. How can we prove that the set of prime number is not finite? Okay, let's suppose that the set of prime is finite and then we reach into the contradiction. If you follow this proof with me, you will see that the set of prime number is not finite. So this is the sketch of the proof. The idea of the proof is to suppose that the set of the prime number is finite, and then you have the norm, the limit number of that prime numbers, and if you times all those prime numbers together and add one, and call this new number p. That means p equal to p1 times p2 times p3 times pn plus one. This number cannot be prime because it cannot belong to that set because it's greater than every number in the set and the set is finite and then uh, you can uh, say that uh, one of uh, the prime in the set has to divide that number that new number and then you will reach into the contradiction because uh, you, if you divide by one of the prime you will have the remainder equal to one that means it's not a divisor how to recognize that the number is prime or not? To recognize that a number is prime, you take all of those prime numbers less than the square root of that number, and then you check if one of those prime is the divisor of the number. If it is the case, that means the number is not prime. Otherwise, the number is prime. And one of the examples is that if you take n equal to 561, and then you consider the square root of that number, you will have 23.68. And then you have 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23 are primes less than the square root of 561. And you have 13 is one of the divisor of 561. That means that number is not prime, it is composite. But if you take n equal to 300 and that's 1, None of the number prime less than the square root of 331 divides 331. That means 331 is the prime number. 
When n is too large, it is too difficult to apply this method. That's why we are going to talk now about the Rabin Miller algorithm. Before talking about Rabin Miller algorithms, let us recall theorem A and theorem B. Theorem A is about the order of the final group, which is in general the number of elements into that group. Theorem B is about the fair mass Lipschitz theorem. For any energy A such that B does not divide A, A raised to the power P minus 1 will be equal to 1 modulo P. This is what Fermat's Lipschitz theorem is about. Now, if you take the contrapose of this theorem, you will have that if there exists some energies A such that P does not divide A, then if A raised to the power P minus 1 is different from 1 modulo P, it means that P is not prime. This is the idea behind the Rabin Miller algorithms. The aim of the Rabin Miller algorithms is to find the property that distinguishes prime and composites. That is it. According to the Fermat's Lipschitz theorem, if n is a prime, then for all a into this uh, final field, a raised to the power n minus 1 equal to 1 modulo a. So if we are able to find some a, such that a raised to the power n minus 1 is different from 1 modulo n, that means n is not prime. We found the witness, which is a, that this number n is not prime. It, such a, a is called a witness that n is composite. If finally we can't find a witness or the witnesses of the compositeness of a number n, that means that number is prime. This is the algorithms of Rabin Miller. The, but the second approach of the algorithms is a, a much more uh, efficient than the previous one. Now it's time to talk about the reliability of the algorithms. The idea behind this lemma is that if you take a number, a divisor of a number has to be less or equal to half of the number. Let me explain it by example. If you take, for example, 20, the divisor of 20 are 2, 5, 10. You cannot have over something more than 10 which can divide 20. That's not possible. Now, the link between uh, this, uh, uh, this example and this lemma is that if you take uh, some uh, subgroup of uh, the group uh, G, G is the final group, uh, that means uh, it's a subgroup also a finite. The order of uh, the subgroup of uh, the final group has to divide the order of the group. That is one result into the group theory. That's why you have here the order of the subgroup K is less or equal to half the order of G. Now, if you take for example this theorem, theorem C is about the witness of some compositeness of the number. We will use this lemma to prove theorem C. In this slide, you can find the proof or the sketch of the proof. Since we are talking about the reliability of these algorithms, the probability that the algorithm does not find a witness in any of a T iteration is at most half raised to the power T. That means that this Robin Miller algorithm is not 100% efficient. The idea is that after implementing these Rabin Miller algorithms to check whether a number is prime or not, we can hence hope not finding witness of the compositeness of the number, and then according to the algorithms, the number is prime. Now, if we take by hand and we compute, and then we finally find that the number is prime, but uh, without having uh, some witnesses of uh, its uh, compositeness, it will be called chemical number. number. In uh, 1899, Corsell had found some property to recognize chemical numbers. A positive composite integer n is a chemical number if and only if it is square free. And uh, for all prime divisor p of n, it's true that p minus 1 divide n minus 1. The first Kamikai numbers are 561, 1105, 
1,729, 2,465, 2,821, 6,601, 8,911. Those numbers have no witness that they are composite. So if uh, you implement uh, Rabbi Miller algorithms uh, using this uh, kind of number, the Rabbi Miller algorithms will uh, tell you that the number is prime. That's not the case. That's why those numbers are called chemical numbers. So the Rabbi Miller algorithms is not 100% reliable. It's not 100% efficient. We reach uh, the final section uh, is about the application. Prime numbers are very useful in, in real life. Uh, for example, in cryptography, we use uh, RSA to build the system. Uh, and then uh, the concept of RSA can be described in some other videos we are going to prepare for you. RSA just means Rivas, Charmir, Andaman. This will be the end of the presentation. Thanks for listening and see you in the next videos.